Aqua mommies, aqua poppies, what's going on? It's your girl D with 8th House Energy here to bring you a Uranus and retrograde reading. What's up, everybody? I hope all is well. Now, Uranus is your ruler. Uranus is the illest, okay? That's why I'd say you guys are the illest. I love you guys. That You know how I feel about you. I tell you this all the time. You guys are the dopest. If you look at your planet compared to every other planet in the solar system, first of all, Everybody is sitting straight on their axis, right? And they, they rotate like counterclockwise, I believe. <clears throat> Uranus, Uranus don't sit straight. Uranus tilts, okay? And then I think Uranus, what it does is it, it, it rotates backwards, where every, every other planet is going uh, counterclockwise. I believe Uranus rotates backwards. I may not be um, exact about that, but I am right and exact about it being tilted, you know, where um, the other planets are upright, Uranus tilts. So Uranus is just totally different than everybody else. And that's why I be trying to tell you guys, like, you're not like anybody else. You're not like any other sign. You are. You got your own path, your own lane. I mean, let's talk about it. Look at the planet of Uranus. Uranus talks about, Uranus represents um, energies of, like, the rebelliousness, the renegade, the anarchist, um, also that surprise you know, that abrupt energy. Um, so <laughs> it's interesting. In, in surprise, you know, surprise, abrupt energy, convulsions. Yesterday I was in the store. Now, first of all, Uranus goes into retrograde. We're in the pre-shadow stages. We've been there since the 5th. Uranus goes into retrograde on the 19th, and it stays there till January 18th of this coming 2022. So I was in the grocery store yesterday morning because I did like six readings yesterday afternoon but when I went to the store in the morning I went to the store there was a gentleman in the store who had Tourette's syndrome I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tourette's but um if you look at somebody's chart you know there could be some type of um like Uranus Mercury aspects that could lead to that because you know Uranus rules convulsions it rules muscle spasms it rules the nerves um it rules cramping of certain things certain muscles nervous disorders um, palsies, cerebral palsy, Bell's palsy, that type of stuff. So it depends on your Uranus placement along with, I believe it's Mercury too, because Mercury is about the communication. But I'm sure if I would have looked at this guy's chart, I would have been able to see something that might have uh, led me to like, okay, this could be what it is. But um, yeah, so he had Tourette's syndrome, so he was in the supermarket, you know, and if, if you've been in, around somebody who has Tourette's syndrome, you know what that is. If you have it, it's somebody like, say you're in the supermarket just shopping and somebody just starts blurting out, bah, 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 just out of the blue. They could be saying things, but maybe they're not. But they just, bah, 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 out of the blue. And it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with this person? Let me get the hell away from my owner. What's up? But, you know, if you know what it is, then you know it's Tourette syndrome. So this guy was in the store, you know, and they were following him around. I didn't say anything. I just went and got my stuff and went on about my business. He walked past me a couple times, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Tourette's. Because I looked at him, and I, you know, I've been around it. So I looked at him, I'm like, oh, he ain't no danger to nobody. He just got Tourette's. <laughs> so I just went on about because at first I'm like, yo, do I got to run up out of here? Because I'm going to run up out of here. Then I saw the guy standing there talking to him, and so I looked at him, looked him up and down, and, um, you know, he couldn't help it. He had did it two or three more times. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I just <laughs> went on back shopping. Now, this morning... There's a park near my building, you know, a, a block or two away, and there's someone in the park protesting. So, you know, Uranus deals with protests, boycotts, just totally rebelling against, you know, the systems that be. That's that energy of Uranus on top of surprise, but you already know that. So that's why I love you guys. You guys are dope. That's why I'm like, yo, you are so unique. But um, Uranus is in Taurus. Now, Taurus... Um, examples of what we've been seeing with Uranus and Taurus are, you know, because Taurus is fixed earth. So, you know, the building that you're in, that's fixed earth. The trees that um, have been here billions of years before your ancestors and mine, you know, and, they, and they're going to be here after we leave and our kids leave, That that's fixed earth, okay? So, you know, when you see these natural disasters, that's Uranus and Taurus. Um, <laughs> for those of you who really don't know, like, you got to understand who you are. You're the bomb, right? So Uranus is a very powerful planet. It's an outer planet, so it stays in retrograde a lot longer than a planet like Mercury, you know? 
So it's in retrograde, and um, well, we're in the pre-shadow stages, and on the 19th, it goes in the direct retrograde. So for right now, the here and now, you know, um, Uranus is in your fourth house, okay, when it's in retrograde in Taurus. Now, when Uranus goes in retrograde, what happens is the external factors around you change, and as a result of those external factors around you changing, internally you change your mindset or your view on something. Usually when you're doing something, um, like for this situation with Uranus in retrograde, you may have tried to do something and you, you couldn't get it done for whatever reason. Like maybe you wanted to move. You've been saving up and you just maybe couldn't save up enough money. Or you just didn't find the right place. And so now that Uranus is in retrograde, what will happen is you'll be looking at it like, okay, what was keeping me from saving the money? You know, why couldn't I find the right place? Maybe you didn't have the money because you had other things going on. You had to pay other bills. Maybe you couldn't find the right place because the universe said it just wasn't the right time. And so maybe you had to change your perspective about it. Or it could have been COVID, you know, like I can't find a decent place now because of everything that's going on with COVID. You know, it's hard for me to actually go into a place and feel the energy of a place. Everybody want to do virtual tours and all that stuff. And, you know, you might be the type of person, no, I need to be in that energy to feel what it's like. I need to go to the building. I need to go in the elevator. I need to feel the energy of the building to know if it's me. But everybody's doing virtual tours. So now that Uranus is in retrograde, you know, um, and things are starting to clear up with COVID and the, the country where we're at is in America. So now, quote unquote, the country's been open since the 4th of July. So now things are starting to open back up. So now you could be like, well, I don't even want to move now. You know, when I wanted to do it, I couldn't do it because of whatever reason. So now I don't even want to do it. Or for some of you, you may have moved. And now you're looking back like, damn, why did I move? I should have waited. I don't really want to be here now. Now that the country is opening back up and I see, you know, the energy in this building or in this in this house, I really am not feeling it. I wish I would have waited. So it could be something like that. But, you know, the fourth house also deals with what's going on internally in you. So maybe there was some type of change you wanted to make. Usually with Uranus is about personal freedom. So there could have been some type of change you wanted to make in reference to your personal freedom. We talked about moving, but it could also be about, you know, letting go of childhood traumas or something like that or something that happened when you were growing up. Maybe there was an issue between you and your mom, you know, or maybe you as a mom, there were issues between you and your children. And so maybe you're looking back at that now like, damn, you know, did I have something to do with the, okay, maybe your children don't get along. And so maybe you never paid attention to it before because it's like, I don't feel like getting involved with it. Y'all adults, y'all can figure it out. But they never did because maybe looking back at it, maybe you never really instilled in them the fact that, you know, hey, your brothers and sisters, your family, this is all you got. You know, maybe you never had the time to sit down with them because maybe you were focused on money, right? So now you look at your children and they don't get along, they don't like each other, and now you could be looking back like, damn, you know, I could have really maybe spent a little bit more time with them instilling in them the importance of their brotherhood and their sisterhood. It could be something like that, you know what I mean? But it has something to do with the fourth house, which is your personal, spiritual self. Also, you know, how you as a mother raised your children or you as a child, the nurturing uh, figure in your life. So maybe you're thinking about things that happened when you grew up as a child and um, maybe there were some things you wanted to you know express to your mom and maybe unfortunately she's no longer here and as a result you're looking back at that and you're not able to express that but it has something to do the change the external change is going to have something to do with energies of the fourth house so you may want to look up energies of the fourth house and see you know what could be going on in your world that could be related to that and then look at the energy of Uranus. Again, it was something that you may have tried to do or that you refused to do, but it would have given you personal freedom. And so you, as right now, you may be regretting doing it or you wish you would have did it and you didn't. Something like that. So let's see what the universe has for you because it's going to be a quick reading. We're going to see what the universe has to say in reference to how the energies could affect you and how you could, you know, successfully deal with it. Wow, be at home. Again, the fourth house deals with the home. So I feel like this is about being comfortable in your own home. You know, um, maybe being at peace or coming to peace of, of things that may have happened in your childhood home growing up. Or this could be about you and your personal self right now. 
the prep, you know, because the fourth house deals with your private life. So, you know, maybe being comfortable with your private life. I don't know. It could be anything that has to do with that. But you may know how this resonates with you. Okay? Being at home. Being comfortable with who you are. You know, because you're a unique individual. So this could have to do with you being comfortable with who you are and what you bring to the table. Like, look, I'm not like everybody else. You know, I may enjoy being single. I enjoy living alone. Some people may look at that like, oh my God, you know, but they don't understand you because you're not a codependent energy. You can detach easily. So you could be comfortable living by yourself. You don't mind dating. You don't mind being in a relationship. And if it was the right person, you wouldn't mind marrying them. But I feel like for some of you, what's important to you is maintaining your own individual freedom. So that could be another example of what could have been going on. Some of you may have gotten into a relationship or a marriage or somebody moved into your home or you moved into theirs and they're invading your personal space. It's like, you know, your individuality is being diminished. And that's what happens sometimes when you're in relationships, you know. And so that's one of the things. I got a Mars in Aquarius. So I am very nervous about being in relationships. You know, I get to the point sometimes where I want one and then it's like another. I'm like, nah. You know, so I go back and forth. <laughs> so the universe is confused. That's why they haven't sent me anybody. It's like, girl, will you make up your mind? I'm like, but I do not want to lose my individuality. I remember being married and having anxiety attacks because my individuality was being melded. And now it's not me anymore. I don't have nothing for me anymore. Now everything is all us. And that's not healthy for an Aquarius. Aquarius don't mind helping everybody. And, you know, because you guys are the social. you the friend of the Zodiac. But you need to be able to detach in some sort of way. So you may be in relationships where, you know, you may see people who, you know how you see people who've been together for years and they got separate bedrooms. Or, you know, you know people who are really, when they go house shopping, they're really strict on that. I need my she shack or I need my man cave. You know, people who like they need their individuality. They need their separateness from the relationship. So, you know, when you're dealing with somebody who got heavy Aquarius placements, you're going to have to understand that about this person. They're going to need their space. A lot of people don't understand that because a lot of people are codependent or they just don't have strong Aquarius placements. But you got to be comfortable in any type of relationship you're in. And if your person can't handle that, you can't rock with them. You can't. You can't. Because you cannot stifle. Because um, Aquarius will rebel. <laughs> okay. So let's get you an E card and we're going to wrap this up. All right, this is a deck I have for a while, but I haven't really found a good time to use it. I think this is a great uh, time to use it. So let's see what we got with the e-card. I so love Aquarius. I love my Aquarius energy. It's so fucking dope. I keep telling y'all that all the time, but I love y'all. I do. Y'all are the illest. All right, so we got leaping in, ooh, leaping in love. What was I just talking about? Let's see what this is about. I'm not familiar with this deck, so I'm going to pull up the book. Okay, so it says leaping in love. So it says Romeo and Juliet, Baggy and Bacall. I don't know who those two are. They've got nothing on you. It's romance time, whether it's a new partner or falling more deeply in love with your own rock star life. Become beset with your dream. Act as if it's already happened. Everything, as they say, is coming up roses. Only this time without the thorns. So this is all about, for some of you, if you want love, you're going to meet that person that you're going to be able to say, boo, I need my man cave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, go, you know I got to have my man cave. You got to understand that about me. I need, you know, I need alone time. Can you respect that? You know what I'm saying? And you probably will already know that when you date this person. You know what I'm saying? And if they can respect that and it's like, okay, well, let's get a house together. All right, well... Let's get a house together with adjoining doors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand, yo, only Aquarius know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You need your individuality. I know um, a couple like that. The house is, is together, but when you go into the house, like, they own two houses. The houses are right next to each other. They're attached to one another. When you go into the woman's house, she got her whole little house set up. And they little houses. She got her whole little house set up, and there's a door on the wall. And when you go through that door... You go into her husband's house and he got his whole little house and he got it set up the way. So sometimes they'll leave the door open, meaning that, okay, boom, the door's open, come on over. But once the door is closed, it's like, look, the door's closed. I need my private time. And the other person respects it and they just do their thing. You know, or like I said, some people have, you know, separate areas of the house. Like the man may have the attic, 
or the woman may have the attic area or she got a separate bedroom and then he got the basement area something like that but you may find somebody that you know can respect that and can connect with you on that level and will give you your your individuality and your space but yet at the same time you know still love you and want to be married to you or want to be in a relationship with you so you know uranus is all about surprise so you may end up being surprised and you meet this person all right so with that being said, that's what I got for you, Aquarius. Just some examples of how Uranus and retrograde could affect you because it's in your fourth house. Um, if you need a general, uh, personal reading, reach out to me. My information is in the box below. Rock on, superstar. I love you, and I'll see you in the next reading.